We live drums. Hello, I'm Gary France. This video is about the tubular bells, or chimes as they're known. This is part of our continuing series of videos on percussion and percussion pedagogy. The tubular bells, or chimes, have a sound of emulation of church bells, made famous in opera, in mu music of, uh, of Berlioz also, in orchestral music. Um, these have been created to reproduce the sound of church bells, or a carillon. They are tuned long tubes of brass or steel with a cap at the top. They're open at the bottom, and we play them usually with a rawhide mallet. Just, you can get these in any hardware store, um, but there are specialty pro percussion products made, but just some kind of a rawhide mallet, something softer than the instrument itself. And if I might add, for those of you who are in my courses on percussion pedagogy and, and playing, pretty much the general rule on sticks and beaters is that they should be softer, made of a softer material than the actual bar that you're hitting or instrument that you're hitting. Okay, tubular bells, you'll note that we have a pedal down here, and this pedal is a little bit different than the vibraphone, it's the exact opposite. On this pedal, when I, when I push it down, they're allowed to ring. When I let go, they dampen. They all ring in together, so we're going to need to uh, use all of our music musicianship and skills to make sure that they sound appropriate. Now, you can get a mallet that has a, raw, a piece of rawhide or, or chamois on one end, and this can allow us to have a little bit of a softer sound. Versus. You'll also notice about the way I'm striking the tubular bell. If you hit it at an angle coming in like this, you get mostly harmonic content. Your hammers should be perpendicular to the tube. Let's see, how about this number? Really beautiful sound. Typically you play one or two notes when you play the chimes. If they're not ringing freely, you need to take check your pedal and make sure that your chime is sitting well. You can actually remove a, a bell and hang it on a freestanding stand. You watch, I can, I can probably remove this one tube from here. To give you an idea, well, they're all sort of interlaced, but well, here we go. We'll take out a couple tubes this way. And to give you an idea, sometimes if I'm playing a show and it calls for just one tube, I will remove one tube like this and hang it, maybe suspend it from a special stand, and uh, it gets a really beautiful sound. Okay, we have a little bit, here's our, our cable, it's held with a steel cable, and so you want to make sure that your cable is, is away from the chime to hold it, and here we go. It will ring for a long time. So quite often in the orchestra, if we're only playing one or two chimes, we will hang them on a special stand to allow that to ring more freely than they often do in a combined stand. You can get based tubular bells, and they go down much lower, almost an octave lower. The diameter of these, these are three quarter inch uh, tubular bells, but you can get one inch and even bigger. 
Some of our older tubular bells were beautiful one and a half, two inch bells and long tubes and they sounded glorious. Of course, this is not, um, you know, if you can have a real church bell, like in something like uh, Symphony Fantastique, that's fantastic because it calls for much lower bells. Well, that pretty much covers it on tubular bells. Um, I hope that you find these videos informative. And of course, if you have questions, please email me at garyfrance.com. Thank you and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye. We live drums.